In this lecture, we'll discuss how light is actually transformed into electrical signals so that your brain can actually perceive um, the light as action potentials and then figure out what to do with it. So this occurs because we have photoreceptors that can detect the stimulus, which is the wavelength of light. We have two types, rods and cones. Rods are more common. There are 100 million in each eye. These give you your black and white vision, your night vision, um, but they are not very specific. They have decreased acuity or discrimination. Their signals all converge together, so they're not quite as specific. Cones, there are less of them. Cones give you your color vision, and they have increased acuity or discrimination. So we kind of know this just like anecdotally. During the day, you can see much more clearly than you can at night. At night, we just need some type of general picture of what we're looking at versus during the day, we need a more specific picture. So the retina itself, looking at this image, has multiple different layers. So there's a pigment layer. There's a layer of the photoreceptors which are the rods and cones. There's a layer of bipolar neurons, and then there's a layer of ganglion cells that synapse um, into the optic nerve. So just to review, the optic nerve comes out of the back of the eye. The part right where it starts is called the optic disc or the blind spot. Um, this is where the blood vessels and nerve exit the eye. Macula lutea is the um, area of increased acuity or discrimination. And then the fovea or fovea centralis is um, a little portion that has only cones and this is where you have maximum acuity or maximum discrimination to give you the best um, vision possible. Here's a little bit better picture of the retina. It's a little cartoon for you. So light comes in it's the back of the retina, and then we send signals out the opposite direction. So we have the layer of photoreceptors, so here in gray, these are all your rods, giving your night vision, and then in the colors are your cones, giving your color vision. Then we have an area that synapses, these bipolar cells. So the bipolar cells receive communication from the photoreceptors, and then they synapse with the ganglion cells that are the optic nerve. Okay, so information comes in and then it goes out. So the photoreceptors themselves, the rods and the cones, have three different parts. So there's the outer segment here. And these have little discs in them that have pigments that can absorb um, light. The pigments in cones are called photopsin and rhodopsin in rods. The inner segment here, this is where you'll see like the mitochondria, the nuclei, all of that other stuff that keeps the cell functioning. And then at the end is a synaptic terminal that has the neurotransmitters that releases it to synapse and communicate with the bipolar cells. So the process of phototransduction is converting light to electricity. We use rhodopsin in the rods so that's made out of opsin and retinol. If you guys are familiar um, with retinol, it's a derivative of vitamin A that you can get from your carrots. And this is why individuals have this um, story that carrots can give you better vision. Well, yes, they can help you um, produce more retinol. Um, which can help you make more rhodopsin, which can help your night vision in your rods. So in the dark, what happens here? Sodium channels are open on the receptor. So that depolarizes the photoreceptor. That causes the calcium channels to open and it releases 
the neurotransmitter glutamate, which is inhibitory. This inhibitory neurotransmitter that gets released here inhibits the bipolar cells. When bipolar cells are inhibited, they don't produce an action potential and they don't release any neurotransmitter, so you get no signaling into the brain. In the light, the conformation changes in the um, retinol. Sodium channels close, which causes hyperpolarization, which causes the calcium channels to close. And then that neurotransmitter glutamate does not get released. When it is not released, the bipolar cell is no longer being inhibited. So it releases an excitatory neurotransmitter that signals the ganglion cell to continue um, signaling to the brain. Okay, so if we look here, <coughs> excuse me, we're comparing the dark on the left and in the light on the right. So you can compare each one of these steps. This, I highly recommend knowing this whole slide. Please, please, please make sure you know and understand the different steps of how vision is signaling and how it's different in dark and night. It's kind of counterintuitive that releasing a neurotransmitter in darkness will cause less signaling. But remember that neurotransmitter being released is glutamate, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So a little bit about other cells in the retina that are not the rods and the cones. So we have those bipolar cells that synapse with the rods and then with the um, ganglion cells. The rod cells have a lot of convergence. So they might take signals from two or three different um, photoreceptors and converge them all together to only send one signal. Ganglion cells converge further and form what is the optic nerve. Horizontal and amacrine cells kind of form connections between other cells, and that allows the um, contrast to be increases, increased so you can see edges of objects better. So horizontal and endocrine cells increase edge perception in the eye using what process? Pause, think about it, and I'll show you the answer in a second. So they use that process of lateral inhibition where we're inhibiting either neuron on the side of the stimulation. If you remember back to this picture, I'm not 100% sure what this does because it does not work for me. Maybe my lateral inhibition isn't working. If you see what this does, maybe shoot me an email, let me know. So duplicity theory, I don't care that you know all the specifics, um, but just kind of understand that we need to have um, rods and cones in order to have night vision and daytime vision. It would be impossible for one type of receptor to give us high sensitivity, so ability to see at night, and high resolution, high quality of the image. So we have both rods and cones to do this. So at night, we're using rods. They're sensitive to dim light. They converge excessively. So you can see here, five rods per one bipolar cell, and then three bipolar cells to um, one ganglion cell to the optic nerve. So there are 15 rods for one optic nerve fiber. This allows us to have a high degree of spatial summation, but we have poor discrimination. So signal on this rod versus this rod 
get perceived exactly the same. So we do not have great discrimination at night. The good thing about our night vision is it just kind of is there to provide a safety net for us. Obviously, we're not nocturnal, so we don't need to have perfect vision at night. This just gives us alerts about motion. Your day vision comes mostly from cones in your fovea centralis. And here we can see there's no convergence. So one cone talks to one bipolar cell, talks to one ganglion cell for one optic nerve fiber. This allows us to have extremely high discrimination. So each individual cone can determine um, its own signal. The problem with cones is that we need light to activate them. So we have really excellent color vision and each color gives us different types of cones. So for example we have blue cones, we have green cones, and we have red cones. The perception of the color comes from the mixture of the cones. So blue light comes in it will signal the blue cone. Depending on what color blue it is, it might also signal a green cone. So if we signal a blue and a green cone, we would expect something like teal to be perceived. Right? So it's the mixture of nerve signals. Color blindness comes from lack of a photopsin. So individuals might lack either red or green cones. Um, and they have difficulty distinguishing red from green. This is usually only in men um, because it's genetically linked to the um, chromosome only found in men. Our depth perception is our ability to judge distance. We need two eyes that have overlapping fields in order to do this. So we can see if an object is closer or further um, based on which part of the retina is getting hit. Here we see the projection of information. So light comes into the right eye here, and you can see half of the signals go to the left side of the brain, and half of the signals stay on the right side of the brain. We call this hemidecussation. On the left side, same thing happens, light comes in, half the information goes to the right side of the brain, half side of the information goes to the left side of the brain. Okay, so this is what we call hemi-decussation, and this happens in that optic chiasm, which is right where the information crosses over or decussates. Okay. Um, this allows the side of the brain that sees information to also be the same side that has the motor control. A few nerve fibers go to the superior colliculus, to the midbrain for um, vision, but most of it is going to your occipital lobe. So the way that we process light helps us to perceive it correctly. So there's some processing in the retina with lateral inhibition and the changes um, in brightness, in contrast, motion, um, and then most of the processing is happening in the occipital lobe, but there's some happening in parietal and temporal to kind of recognize words, recognize shapes, objects, etc. So it's a combination of processing in your actual eyeballs and in your brain and kind of throughout your whole brain.